Well, hello there. This episode is brought to you by the letter L. L is for lasers. I tend to say this a lot in my videos, but when it comes to scale modeling, references are everything. Books, photos, blueprints, all critical to getting things just right. And of course, the best reference is being able to get up close and personal to the real thing, like this Sherman tank at the Canadian Tank Museum. Now, you might recognize this bit from the Millennium Falcon, but sadly, getting up close and personal to the real thing is not always possible, especially if what you are building is a fictional spaceship from a galaxy far, far away. Now, that's not to say I haven't tried. I have, on multiple occasions, reached out to the art department at ILM to inquire about gaining access to the archives and taking photographs of the real Millennium Falcon filming model. I've even offered to pay for the whole thing, but nary a reply. Well, I suppose you need to know the right people, and I don't. Well, unfortunately, the closest most of us will ever get to be in the same room as the real studio model is the Bandai Perfect Grade Kit. And yes, yes, we, we all know that it gets some things wrong. These panel lines on the lower deck, for example, are all in completely the wrong place. But it's probably as close as we're ever going to get. This and a good set of calipers, though, can take you a long way. It's how I started, just measuring as I went along. But the process is slow and it's tedious and it's very prone to error, especially when there's a lot of measurements. Recently, though, I've tried a new approach. Well, two variations of a new approach. photogrammetry, and laser scanning. So before I get too far down this particular rabbit hole, I need to mention that none of the devices or applications that I use in my videos come from sponsors. Nobody gives me free stuff. So I'm allowed to talk about these things however I want, and I do. The term photogrammetry first dates back to 1867. And broadly stated, it's generating three-dimensional information from two-dimensional imagery. And I used a form of photogrammetry when I created the sidewalls masters for my build from photo references. It's in a previous video that you should definitely check out because it's really cool and very exciting. But wait until you've done this one. Now, the process works really well, but like using the calipers, it's pretty tedious and prone to error. It's only as good as your photo references and the software you're using. Now, photogrammetry is really accessible to everyone with a smartphone, which is, well, everyone. In this video, the smartphone app I will be using is Polycam, the free version. It provides 20 slots for object scans with each slot comprising of about 100 pictures or you can pay the subscription of between two and 400 US dollars annually, which gives you unlimited object scan slots and ups the picture per object limit from 100 to 2000. And like pretty much every other phone app, you do need to create an account with a valid email address, which makes sense as it's their servers that do all the heavy lifting. Your phone is just taking the pictures. So let's give it a go. If it's a larger object, find a way to put it in the middle of a space and walk around it. For small objects, it's best if you can put them on a turntable for scanning. I'm using the one I use for airbrushing, but there are turntables specifically for 3D scanning that will rotate the object for you. In either case, you need photos from the full 360 degrees. For this example, I'm using the gun platform from the Bandai Perfect Grade Falcon Kit. Take as many pictures of the object as your account allows, the more pictures the better. Once complete, just follow the steps to upload them to the Polycam servers. In a few minutes, you'll have your model. 
which will look something like this, which is, well, not very impressive. Even less so with no textures. Eh, well, it's free and you get what you pay for. Although crude, when it's imported into Blender, it can still be used to obtain some basic reference points. With the textures enabled, we have enough information to extract the armor plating pattern and determine some relative positions of Greeblies. It's important to note that overall dimensional accuracy is not something photogrammetry does. So after importing the model, you'll need to adjust things. Photogrammetry is really cheap and nasty 3D scanning. For the scale modeler, it doesn't produce something that's good enough. For a three-dimensional mesh that you can actually do something with, you're going to need what's in this box. What's in the box? Inside this rather hefty case is the Creality Raptor 3D Scanner. Now, there are many 3D scanners on the market, but this is one of the very few that works with lasers. A sophisticated heat beam, which we called a laser. Laser scanning is just a tad more complicated than photogrammetry with your phone. For this, you'll need a dedicated scanner and a really good computer. This PC has an i7 processor, 64 megabyte of RAM, and a NVIDIA Quadra 4000 video card, and a 4K monitor. This should probably do just fine. Oh, and by the way, yes, it's 2025, I'm using Windows 10 because Windows 11 is like being tongued by Jabba the Hutt. Oh. Right, just no to that. To get up and running, you'll need to install the Creality Scan 4 software. This is available from the Creality Labs website. After installation and each time you run it, Creality asks for administrative privileges. My understanding is that it needs to write SCANA metadata to the system registry although I'm always concerned when my software requires this. Once I installed the software and I plugged in the Raptor, well, everything went pear-shaped. I had nothing but problems trying to get the Raptor to be recognized by Windows. Why? Well, it turns out that Creality had been using an exploit in the standard Microsoft USB drivers for cameras. When Microsoft fixed that exploit, the Raptor stopped working. Creality's solution was to tell their customers to uninstall the Windows security update that fixed that exploit. They even provided a button in the software to do that just for you, as well as instructions on how to do it manually. Two or three regenerations ago, I was the product director for a large consumer electronics company. My responsibilities were keyboards, mice, and these trackballs here. So, I do know a thing or two about hardware devices and how they work with Windows. Microsoft works very closely with hardware developers to ensure their products work properly with Windows. News of changes to the operating system are pushed out to manufacturers months in advance. So I'm very sure that Creality knew this change was coming. So to advise your customers to uninstall Windows security updates just to make your device work is rather next level sketchy to me. Creality did eventually release a firmware update for the Raptor, but of course there's a catch. You can't install the firmware on the Raptor via a PC until the PC can talk to the Raptor, which it can't do until there's firmware on the Raptor. The workaround? Install the firmware via a Mac computer, which I don't have, and I don't know anybody that does have one. The other option that Creality gives you is to install the firmware via an Android phone. Why specifically Android? Well, it's because Android uses the worldwide standard micro USB connector, whereas Apple has the proprietary lightning connector. And there is no way to connect the Raptor scanner to an Apple iPhone. Well, guess which kind of phone that I have? Once I found an Android phone that I could borrow, the whole process of updating firmware only lasted about 15 seconds. And no, I don't want to see any jokes in the comments about processes only lasting 15 seconds. The Raptor also has an optional handle attachment that doubles as a Wi-Fi connection to the device. I could have used this device to update the firmware, but at over $1,700, they're as expensive as the scanner itself, so I don't have one. Instead, I am left to fight with these very short power and USB cables. The USB 3 certified cable can be up to 3 meters in length. 
For those that still don't use metric, that's the length of seven and a half groundhogs. As the supply cables are only about one gopher longer than two groundhogs in length, I find they are much too short for this device. Well, that process was pretty painful, but now everything is up and running. So let's scan the same Bandai gun platform that we did the photogrammetry scan with. Unlike photogrammetry, laser scanning will provide exceptional dimensional accuracy, right down to 0.01 millimeters. But to achieve that, the process requires these reflective marker dots to be placed around the object. Or if you're scanning a large object, like say a car bumper, the dots will need to be placed on the part. You could just place the dots on the turntable, but I prefer to use these 3D printed marker dot trackers as they're most easily reused. They can be found for free on most 3D printable websites and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Some of them remind me of the 20 sided dice used for Dungeons and Dragons. Once placed, it's critical to never move these markers once you start scanning the object. Otherwise you'll lose tracking and never be able to recover. As with photogrammetry, the surface of the object you're scanning impacts the quality of the final result. Very shiny, very smooth, or transparent objects mm, will need a little bit of help. And that's where this comes in. This is 3D scanning spray. It's essentially a dull coat that you can wash off. And some of them even evaporate over time. But I would definitely test this stuff on mission critical parts spray it on some scrap material and make sure it's not going to craze the plastic, especially for clear parts like, say, a canopy. Now that everything is set up and it's all ready to go, let's shoot some lasers. Commence primary ignition. As you scan the object, you'll see the results real time. The software will tell you if you are too far away or too close, using the graph on the side of the preview window. Point cloud grows with every pass and areas turn green when enough data has been collected. I found it a little tricky to keep the scanner the correct distance as you move it around. It does require some hand-eye coordination, and you would think somebody that spent decades in the video game industry would be better at this sort of thing. Thankfully, if the software drops tracking, it picks it up again rather quickly. Any scanning software packages have the ability to select marker dots and automatically delete anything at that level or below. This makes it very easy to delete whatever platform the part was sitting on. Creality Scan, however, doesn't have this feature, so you need to manually lasso select and delete everything that you don't want. Most of the time you're working in the interface and preview mode with the raw point cloud, but to do anything useful with that data, you need to click this Fuse button. You'll be presented with a selection of options, and when applied, you'll see the real details captured by the scan. I only discovered this by accident when I tried to merge two objects that had not been fused. There is this one step button, but I find its default settings are not good enough for the type of work I want to do with the scanner. I tried doing this scan on a laptop with just 16 gigabyte of memory. And while it works okay for small parts like this dumb platform, anything larger, the software runs out of memory and crashes. So I really do recommend 64 gigabyte or more for larger parts. Here though are both scans inside Blender with no rescaling or other adjustments. Just the raw input with the textures turned on and positioned beside each other. You can see that the part scanned with the phone is the wrong size and only provides the illusion of most details via textures. It also has no underside. When we switch off the textures, you can see that it loses all apparent detail and is quite roughly shaped. Whereas the laser scan part is correctly sized and all of the smaller details stand out because they are part of the mesh. The laser scan is not something I could send to a 3D printer and get a perfect out of the box copy of the Bandai part, but what it will do is give me enough information to get much more accurate dimensional data. Beyond the fidelity of detail, another advantage of laser scanning over photogrammetry is that you can make multiple scans, such as this top and bottom then merge all the scans together into a single part. As an example, is this larger part from the Bandai kit. You would be hard pressed to achieve this with photogrammetry. There are many videos on the tubes that show how to do scan merging, so I won't cover it here, but it's pretty cool. As I've said before in my videos, nothing on the exterior of my Falcon build will be 3D printed. 
everything will be either the real kit parts or castings of the real kit parts. I'll be using 3D scanning simply to create more references for myself. But that, of course, assumes that you have access to things that you can 3D scan. I think, though, that for the scale modeling hobby in general, the combination of 3D scanning and 3D printing is going to be a boon. Nothing is going to be more accurate than a 3D scanned object scaled down and then printed off and put onto your model. It's going to be really fantastic. Before I end this episode, I'd like to mention that this channel has now passed 100 subscribers. And I think that's pretty cool. I'd like to thank everybody that jumped on board for the ride and is interested in what I'm doing. If there's something specific that you'd like me to cover in a future video, just mention it below in the comments. But for now, I have to get busy scanning this tank. So thanks again for watching. Great googly moogly. <laughs>